We learned our lesson from last year. It's Traveler's Week on the Rob Dibble Show. Yeah, I think you look at the job he's done. He's been leading that uh, leash on him. He's really uh, pitched well. I mean, the numbers show that. And, uh, um, you know, he probably would take a couple pitches back tonight, I'm sure. But, you know, you got to stay behind these guys, especially when they're doing a great job. And that's why he had a shot there in the ninth to get that last hitter. You know, I like the matchup. And, you know, he just carved it down the right field line. We are back on the Rob Dibble Show, live from the Travelers Championship, sponsored this hour by Michelob Ultra, and joined here on the set, Matt Necci. He is board member at Special Olympics Connecticut, one of the beneficiaries of the Travelers Championship, and a partner at Halloran Sage, uh, one of the big sponsors of the Travelers Championship. And Matt, welcome to the set. Thanks for having me, Rob. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, being a beneficiary with the Special Olympics. Uh, you know, you and I talked a little bit about the Dream Ride that's coming up in about 40 days here in Connecticut. Uh, but Special Olympics Connecticut, I mean, how much has it grown? How much does it benefit from some of the proceeds of the Travelers? So the big uh, area we're pushing this week is the Birdies for Charity that the Travelers does. Every uh, dollar that's donated to Special Olympics Connecticut through the Travelers Championship is going to go to Special Olympics Connecticut plus the Travelers. Uh, Andy Bissett, Nathan Group, they're a great team. Um, they do a, a world-class event here, and they'll be adding 15% to the donation. So, um, you know, to your point, Special Olympics for a long time has been doing tremendous things in the community, but a lot of people, I think, associate Special Olympics with the Winter Games or the Summer Games. Right. And we've made a, a real conscious effort to make it a more year-round thing. So our athletes are, are living healthy styles. They're being uh, included um, we want to break down walls. I think people have perceptions of what it means to be a Special Olympian. These are really talented people. They have intellectual disabilities, but they are talented people. They are hardworking people, uh, and they want to be part of teams. So um, that's been a real focus for us. 50-year anniversary here in Connecticut. It is. We, uh, we recently celebrated our 50-year uh, anniversary. Um, you know, Special Olympics Connecticut, our president, Bo Doherty, is, uh, yep. he could be anywhere in the world, right. quite frankly, and right. he's been... Uh, He's been someone that has set the standard for Special Olympics International. Uh, he was the founder of our unified sports program, which over the last 25 years has just grown to tremendous levels. Well, let's talk about, Matt, integration into society. I mean, a lot. one thing I love about the Dream Ride is we watch videos on a lot of these Special Olympians and their jobs and things that they're doing away from just being athletes. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Like you said, it, you know, it's, they're not just Olympians. They're not just athletes. But they also, like you said, are hard workers and, and are growing more independent every day. They are. Um, and something that people need to be aware of is that our athletes get a lot of care. Um, when they're in the school age, but after 18, we really have to work right. to make sure they get the services. Excuse me, the services they need. Um, work on their eyes, work on their feet, healthy living, making sure their weight is managed. So, um, you know, one of the reasons the Travelers has been supporting us, my firm Haller and Sage has been getting more involved. We really want to make sure that we are just introducing people to our athletes and seeing how hard they work. Um, there's organizations like Walgreens who are providing job training for athletes. So. Although we really want to focus on the three weeks before our winter and summer games, we want to go above and beyond and show these people, you know, you are part of society. You have something to offer. There are things you can contribute. And I think there are just misperceptions out there in the world that, you know, frankly, uh, events like Dream Ride or Unified Sports, I think, give people opportunities to say, you know, these are people that are really, really talented. Um, and the, and the, the skill levels for sports range a lot, but... The CIAC in the last few years has really become a huge supporter of us. We have 3,500 athletes that are participating in unified sports where athletes with intellectual disabilities are matched up with partners in their high schools or middle schools. We're getting state championship banners put in high school gym walls. There's 1.5 million athletes internationally participating in this. So it really has become we're trying to take a more holistic approach to how we're working with our athletes. I love unified sports and really didn't get introduced to it until talking to Bo Doherty and we talked for hours about the possibilities of where this is going to go and how it's going to grow and really with you know everything that you've been saying and everything I've been seeing in the in, in Connecticut and around the world like this is going somewhere this has really got some legs to it uh, 
Bo and I talk about having a Harvard Yale game and trying to set up stuff with colleges <laughs> and like right. making it as big as possible because it's not like we're doing it for anything other than it is exciting. Like it is, it is. a cool game to watch and it, it involves all sports and all people can play. And, and this is the area that if you talk to Bo, this is where we're going. So I think you're going to see more and more unified sports. ESPN has been a huge supporter of yep. us putting our summer games and winter games on their tel national television network. Um, I, I think the more you um, see our athletes, th th these are people. I've played in a unified basketball game recently. You got dunked on. I right? got dunked on. <laughs> <laughs> I was covering a guy that hit six threes. Now, he was a really talented athlete. It probably speaks to how poor of a basketball player I am as well. Um, but, you know, th this wasn't something that people thought was going to work right away. Right. Our founder... Uh, the great Eunice Shriver, I think, she, you know, Bo tells a story. She was very hesitant to to, um, to do this because I think she thought that some of the non-intellectual disability partners were going to take away from what our athletes can do. And she actually attended, it was, I believe it was a baseball game, and she saw one of the people on the field kind of go after a pop-up and cut a few people off to catch the ball. And she said, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Right. They're going to take opportunities away from our athletes. And it had to be explained to her that that was one of our special Olympians. That wow. That. So, wow. Um, and when that happened, she kind of got on board right away. And, uh, again, this started 25 years ago with Bo in Connecticut, and it's become this international phenomenon. Yeah. Cricket in India, yeah. unified cricket has become one of the big sports that's really thriving overseas. Talking to, uh, to Matt Necci, he is a partner at Halloran Sage, one of the sponsors of the Travelers Championship. He is a board member at Special Olympics Connecticut, one of the beneficiaries of the Travelers Championship. Let's talk about expanding the sports for the Special Olympi Olympian athletes. I mean, we've seen a lot of the sports that they've done over the last 50 years, but what about golf? What about some of these other sports that, that you know, I'm sure you feel and I feel that, that a lot of these athletes could probably handle? So golf is actually an area that we are starting to get more and more athletes to participate in. And we have, uh, I wouldn't call them scratch golfers, but these are we have some golfers that have some tremendous handicaps. I think, you know, when I was growing up, my family got me involved in Special Olympics when I was about three years old. So at that time, it was... You had your summer track, you had your winter downhill skiing and cross country and some bowling, uh, but then we moved into softball and golf and volleyball. Yep. It, it's growing at, at, at tremendous rates. Soccer is one of our huge summer events. So, you know, I think something we want to stress is if you have a family member or a friend or someone you know who is interested in partaking in a sport or you're willing to volunteer or coach, we have opportunities for you, and in all likelihood, we have a sport that's going to match your interest. SOCT.org? SOCT.org. Uh, and this week, if you go to the Travelers Championship, again, they have the, the Birdies for Charity link. And when you make your donation, you'll be able to pick Special Olympics Connecticut as one of the beneficiaries. Matt, thank you so much for coming on with us today. You're doing some great stuff in the community. I really appreciate it.